Hello guys and welcome back to Comment and it's time for another tutorial. But before I'm going to start, first I got a new microphone, so please put in the comment section what you guys think about it. And now we're going to start and first thing you're going to do is you're going to watch the first person character folder towards the prefab folder, you're going to select the first person controller, that's the controller we are going to use. So um, if you're using another controller, just use the same techniques, but it can maybe be a little bit different. But we are, um, you're going to double click on this uh, thing. So you're going to watch within the script and we're going to add a new bool and that is can move. And we are just going to say that within the update function that only if you can move, everything that's happened within here is going to happen. Um, I already used it in some other tutorials, so that's why I already did it only you can still rotate. So that's something that's, I think, very important. Um, like in Team Fortress 2, where you can just shoot those grappling hooks, you can still uh, look around while you are uh, in the air. So we are going to create a new script and you're going to do that with, you're going to watch your scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script, grappling hook, And here, the very first thing we're going to do is that on the grappling hook, we are using the first person controller. So we're going to put here using Unity uh, standard assets, because that's where it's from, first um, characters from that first person controllers. And we need a few variables. Um, that's not the only one. Uh, we're going to start with the camera. So the camera is very important because from the perspective of the camera, at least when you are in first person, from there you're going to shoot the grappling hook. Um, from there you want to point at something. That's a little bit uh, important. We also have a public array cast hit. hit. We are going to use that for uh, to see where exactly a ray cast hits an object so we know where to go. We also have, have a public layer mask, killing mask. And this is because when you are shooting a thing, you don't want to hit yourself. Uh, that's the very first thing. But also maybe you want some objects that you cannot uh, shoot a grappling hook on it. And you can just put on another layer, which you cannot reach within the grappling hook system. Also, uh, the max distance is very important. Um, and we are going to have a public bool is flying. So um, by a lack to a better word, I just used it as the state when you are on your way to a place when you just use the grappling hook. Um, a public vector three location is going to be the location where you want to go to. Um, we want to have a public float speed. So this is just a variable which we can just change to make sure that we got the right speed. Um, a public transform hand, which we are going to uh, use um, to um, set the position of the line renderer. Uh, the line renderer is going to be for the graphics. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on creating the perfect graphics, but this is, I think, the very least we have to do. So a public first person controller is also going to be needed for so we can access the can move variable and a public line renderer lr so within the start function we're not going to do anything for this particular system but because um i think it's important when you've got first person controller that the cursor is locked we're just going to put it right here um normally i will put it in another script but just for now, we're just going to put it right here. Maybe you already did this, but let me just do it for now. Um, so now we're going to create two different functions. So the very first one is when we are going to find a spot. And the second one is going to be when you are flying or when you are in the air, at least. So a public void find spot. And when you are going to find a spot, the very first thing you're going to do is using a physics 
dot raycast. This is just going to make sure that it can find the point that's directly in front of the camera and just shoot towards there the crappin hook. And so it starts or it uh, starts with a cam the transform dot position and it goes forward of course. Um, the output is hit because we want to know what exactly uh, is the position so we need that. We got the max distance and we got the cling mask. So very first we're going to set that is flying is true because you are now in the air because this if loop will only happen when you are hitting something with that ray gas. So it means that you can just shoot that grappling hook. Um, the location is going to be hit dot point um, because that's the location. The hit dot point is the location where the raycast hits the object, which is directly in front of the player, and that is the right location where you want to go to. We are also going to say that you cannot move, so uh, can move is false. The line renderer is, we're going to enable it. So uh, we're just going to say that it is enabled. Because we don't want the line renderer, the crappling hook, the graphics of it, just always uh, to be there. You only want to, that to be happening when you are um, in the air. Otherwise it will look a little bit stupid. The last thing we're going to do is the line render works with positions. So we're going to set a position. I'm going to set the second position. So the first position is going to be your hand. And the second position, the position where the line will go to, is going to be the place where we want to go to. So that's the second position. So we're just going to put here the location. That's all we're going to do for find spot. When you are in the air, um, so when you are flying, you are going to do, we're going to do two things, or actually three things. Uh, the very first one is going to set the right location, so transform.position is something. The second thing is that we're going to set the position of the line renderer, so it will uh, just update where the uh, grappling hook will stop, so it's just with, by your hand. And the third thing, it will check if you're not clo uh, too close to the wall. Because if you're too close, you will just fall down like it happens within Team Fortress. So here, we are going to do effect3.lerp. And we start with transform.position. We are going towards location. We are um, traveling at the speed, of course. We're going to multiply it by the time that delta time. So every player, even though you've got a different frame rate, will go just as fast. And the last thing is we're going to divide it by factor 3.distance of the distance between the transform dot position and the location. So this last thing is to make sure that when you are really far away, you will not go too fast because otherwise it will look a little bit stupid um, because if you don't put that there um, it will happen that every time it doesn't matter where you st are standing it will go just uh, as fast so you will be just within three, three seconds always at the location where you want to be or one second or whatever well that's not something you want in your game if you are further away you want also that the traveling time will take a little bit longer so that's why we got that there um, now we're going to set the position and the second position. Uh, so actually, or the first position, which is zero, because you start always with counting with zero within um, programming, and it's going to be at the same place as the hand that transform. Um, that position, position. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, now we're going to do going to check if you are too close. So if you're too close, you will just end this all, this whole script uh, thing, the whole crappling hook. So when factor three dot distance 
from transform.position towards location, so that distance is smaller than dot five units, then it will drop. So two things why I choose this uh, variable. Um, the object itself is already, I don't know, dot three units long, um, the radius. And you need to, um, that's like still part of the distance. So you need to think that when you're creating this variable. Uh, this is not very close towards the wall, so uh, maybe you want to have it a little bit closer. But if you make it the variable too small, you will never end this system because it will never be that close. Um, also, about transform.position, that we're going to do it like this and not uh, with a rigid body, is that you can may have some obstacles, well, halfway through when you're just shooting that grappling hook. You will get some weird situations when you are moving with a rigid body. Um, you can of course always create that when you are hitting something you will just drop. But for now we're just going to do it like this. Um, we're going to say that is flying is false. So we're not flying anymore. You can move again. That's very important. And the line render is disabled. And now the last thing we're going to do is put it in the update function. And well, we're going to put in the update function a little bit more even. Very first, we start with that when your input, not cat key, um, is the key code Q, then you will just find a spot and start the crappling hook. Uh, you can just put any key code you want there or mouse or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Here you want to have that when you are flying, only then you can uh, use the flying uh, function. That's I think still very logic. Now we're going to make that when you are in the air, maybe you want to end it all. Um, I mean, you don't want to fly anymore. And the most common reaction that player will do is jump. So input that dot cat key, key code dot space. So when it's hitting the space bar and you are flying, then it will set is flying to false. It will set uh, that you can move again. And it will also say that the line renderer is disabled. So now we're going towards the scene and we're just going to set everything ready. I'm very sorry, I just typed it wrong. Um, so just go towards here and we are going to put the uh, prefab. So we're going towards uh, prototyping, prefabs, and we're going towards the floor. We're just going to put floor so we can just walk around. Uh, this is just a test scene, so if you guys you can just sit down and relax for now, just for a moment. Uh, we're just going to move the main camera, we don't need it currently, because we're going to use the first person controller. Which we are just going to add um, a line render, line render, and the grappling hook. And we're just going to assign every variable. This is something you have to do. Uh, we're just going to say that everything can be touched except the player, which we're just going to set here that we are the player. Very important. And now the max distance is going to be 25 units. You can do whatever you want. Um, we're just going to create a new game object. And we are just, you can just play around with this one. I'm just going to put this very, very quickly towards the right position. Uh, just put it beneath your camera because it needs to move with it. Um, there's just a little bit of what you like the most. Um, some people say it's more realistic to put it here, all this within the camera, so just do whatever you want. Um, so we're just going to put it right here somewhere around here it can be a little bit different and we just go on with this we're just going to assign the hand here 
the line renderer. Come on. And the first person controller. So now we got this. Um, we need to do a few more things. We need to change the. We need to add here a material. I don't have one of a rope, so we are just going to put. Um, for now, just this one. Um, for now, it's just a test, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to move away the line renderer, and now I'm going to add one little cube, so we can just test it. And you can just play around for yourself a little bit longer, but I think that won't be needed to put in this video. Also, if you guys want me to do more about the graphics, just leave it in the comment section below and let's just test it now. And as you can see, it is already working, but it looks a little bit weird because the rope is a little bit too wide. So we can just going to change that. We are going to change it towards uh, dot two. Um, so we're just going to make this a little bit smaller and now it will look a lo little bit better um, still because I didn't use really a rope texture it will still look a little bit weird but I think this is good enough for now so I hope you guys liked it if you did please leave a like or a subscribe and I'll see you guys next time with another tutorial and uh, if you guys want more tutorials like this one or more about this topic just put it in the comment section below bye